Welcome back to Retro Rewind. In today's video, got another episode of Watch Party for you. This is our weekly television and occasional movie review series. We'll get into that in a moment. Today, we're talking about The Boys once more. Last week, we talked about The Boys Season 1. This week, we're getting into The Boys Season 2 as we catch up for Season 4, which launches June 13th, and we cannot be more excited about it. Like I mentioned, though, a little bit of a program shift coming soon. It's going to be our first ever movie review this coming week. We're going to be doing a Fury Osa review here on Watch Party, so you can keep an eye out for that. Yeah, I know. IGN already put out their 10 out of 10 review. You already know. You're going to go to the theaters. You better show up here anyway, damn it. All right? You better show up here anyway, because we're going to be watching the movie in theaters and reviewing it immediately. Locke, because you are very special, you're, you're going to be getting some sort of early access because of Retro oh, yeah, Rewind, yeah, yeah. which yeah. is phenomenal. But otherwise... <laughs> Uh, we'll be here reviewing Furiosa next week, and then we'll be back to cover the rest of the boys as we lead up to a, a really fun June for us here on Retro Rewind, which we'll talk more about that uh, once we get closer to it. But Locke, I'm joined by you as always. How are you, good sir? I'm good. I'm good. But um, I have to start with an apology. Oh, Maddie. no. We're bending the knee so early. I, I, we do. We do. Because I made a mistake last week, a pretty big mistake. Uh, I wish I had my cat while well, she's there, or a dog or something, so I can do the typical YouTube apology, <laughs> but this will, this will have to do. Because last week, people should know that we, or at least I, but you you too, I think, we, we watch these seasons, and then we record, right? Yeah. So I watched season one through three years ago when they aired. Season two mm -hmm. was like four years old at this point, I think, or five years old. Well, four years old. Um, so before we recorded last episode, I watched season one. And at the end of season one, Homelander tells Butcher that, that, what he did to his wife was consensual. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought, oh, it's consensual. So I brought it up with you. Yeah. But then I saw some YouTube comments saying like, no, it wasn't consensual at all. Where do you guys get that from? I was like, well, he, he tells them. Uh, mm. He tells him, doesn't he? He believed Homelander. I, very <laughs> stupid mistake, yeah. Because then I watched season two, and it immediately became clear it wasn't consensual at all, of course. Right. Um, so that was a pretty big mistake. So my apologies. I, I, I dragged you oh. down, Maddie. No. Uh, well, we were joking about it, but we're even now, right? This is how it's going to go, right? So, and in our last call sheet, uh, I was talking about Goodfellas and and Locke cracked a joke about Tommy, who, you know, had this whole scene about like, oh, you think I'm a funny guy, huh? And like his reaction to it. And I thought you were joking. I was telling Laley about it. I thought you were joking about Joe Pesci put out a rap, right? He put out a rap and it was so bad. I thought it was a parody oh. and he was going after people because he thought it was good and people were making fun of him and he wanted to be taken seriously. And so when you said like, oh, you don't want to laugh at Joe Pesci, I was like, oh, he's talking about that. Oh. Completely missing the reference of the movie I just saw. So and Locke didn't say anything until after we recorded. So now we've each hung each other out to dry. We're on even standing here because I, I remember when you said that, I was like, did that happen? I don't know. Because me, my memory can be terrible at times where I, mm. I have moments my memory is pitch perfect and there's times where I'm like, I just saw this season a couple of months ago and i already am unsure about this very important detail <laughs> so we're even sir but we're talking about season two a lot happens here and i will just spoil a little bit up front by saying that man i think this is my favorite season so far i really like season two when i was telling my friends about it going into season two they were like oh that's like the worst one probably yep. but i don't know what was your take on it because and maybe you also saw it as it like came out week to week yeah. Me watching it all at once, though, just on that binge grind, I adored it. I thought it was really funny. I thought it was really thought provoking. I thought they did something in the finale that was uh, pretty bold that, that I think could have been communicated incorrectly. But I think yeah. everyone got the message. And it was something that's extremely tough to do in today's climate, especially back then, even um, yeah. just a few years ago. So I really love uh, what they pulled off here with season two. We'll get into the nitty gritty of big moments, things that stood out for us. But Locke, I want to know for you. Where does season two fall for you? Well, we have we already have a question about this because season two is, like you said, it's pretty divisive, apparently. I didn't notice uh, beforehand. Um, but we got a question from Jack Asbury who asks, if I had to pick one, I would say a step down from season one, but not massively at all. Season two is, ve is very good overall. And then this question continues, and we'll get into this. No, we'll get into this later. Uh, yeah. it'll, it'll be a fun we'll bring it back it'll return. Um I loved season two. I loved it when it aired. I thought season two, season one was great. I thought when I I remember vividly remember watching season two and thinking like, oh my god, mm -hmm. this is a, this is such a great show. I love it. 
Um, I'm currently rewatching season three. I don't know which one is my favorite, but it's definitely two or three. Um, yeah. Which none people... of them are bad. Like I know that's no. such an easy answer, but none of them are bad. Like each of yeah. them accomplished so much more. But I think season two for me is my favorite just because it it yeah. does so much so fast. And again, it, it continues that momentum that season one had. One thing I was super complimentary about is oh, they're just not afraid to like answer these tough questions right up front. I'm yeah. like, well, where is this story gonna go? And it always had me guessing. And uh yeah. again, the addition of Liberty uh was I think oh. a, a, with with the type of character she was, especially for the, the time that this came out. I think it was coming out during like the pandemic where uh, there's a yeah. lot of a lot of problems in society itself. And and to have yeah. this very overtly heavily racist character uh, was insane, even nowadays. But like just during that time period, that was probably pretty scary for the actress to be doing. Um, but nonetheless, great, yeah. season two just goes places that I just I didn't anticipate and continues to paint these. I put in quotes heroes in a pretty terrible light. You just learn how each of them are awful in their own yeah. way. Her. Most definitely. And and she also has a really interesting backstory. Yeah, great actress, too. I've only seen her once before in like a, a not a sitcom, but like a comedy, semi-comedy show. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. even remember what it's called, but she did great. She was amazing. What I especially loved about the character that she, that she was so into social media and like the, the manipulation that we see these yeah. days from both sides. Um, yeah. That's another thing, because, of course, Stormfront is like a, a Nazi. It's like a, an allegory for what's going on. Like everybody's calling everybody a Nazi these days, of course, yeah, yeah. A lot of racism everywhere. But what I also liked about this is, again, that it made fun of both sides, which it really did, because the whole brave Maeve bullshit thing is clearly <laughs> is, is clearly like like making fun of the whole woke, um, woke nonsense that, yeah. that we also see yeah. everywhere. And that's why, because I saw last week people, some people really didn't, didn't agree with us there. That's why I think it does make fun of both sides. You just maybe... Maybe you just don't realize it or you don't see it. Like or some Victoria, people are more sensitive than others, but you know. <laughs> that's also true, yeah. Because Victoria Newman, that's definitely like, or at least to me, that's like an, an AOC character, while Homelander yeah. is more like a more like a Trump character, of course, especially yeah. in, the, in the next season. It's so, deliberate. I think it's it's yeah. you're ignoring the point if you just don't draw these connections. And I know they're yeah. scary for some people to say. It's like, oh, we're getting into politics and I get it, but like you and yeah. I both come from the same background of just like, hey, you know, we have respect reasonable yeah. minds may differ all that good stuff so exactly yeah i just think if you don't draw these connections when they're so blatant there and just like choose to get offended on one side or the other you're missing the whole point of the show which exactly. i think is what makes it very good again it's that yeah. i'll reuse a line from last episode it's that very south park driven humor yeah. if you will where it's just like it's not just you it's everybody yeah. everybody's a target and i again i i love that the show manages to do that well by the way not making it its whole shtick it's it's a parody in many ways but it tells a really good story I'd like to get into it if you're ready, sir. Yes, yes, do okay. it, do it, let's go. Yeah, there was a lot happening here. We learn about soup terrorists. This is kind of building off of the events of what happened really at that plane crash scene, if my memory served me right, where it's like yep. they were framing it as a terrorist attack and and that started this whole war. And so now you have soup terrorists and it turns out this is Kimiko's brother, uh, which is where eventually Liberty enters the story. You see her first bout of race, racism of, of many, by the way. <laughs> She yeah. kills him in front of Kimi, uh, in front of Kimiko, and uh, you start to really feel for her. And I mean, that Kimiko uh, and Frenchie relationship, man, just like right. got me on the edge of my seat. I'm usually not a sucker <laughs> for like TV relationships. So I'm like, man, I'm I'm pulling from them because yep. there's been so many moments where I'm just like, don't die, please, don't <laughs> die. I love Kimiko; she's so cool, man. So yeah, this was I thought a, a really like, oh snap, they're going their start because Liberty is posed as this like the next saving grace really to the point where she's threatening the the throne for homelander and you're thinking that she's all great but she's kind of a free speaker you think she's going to kind of oppose what starlight's doing right yeah. which is like being the goody two shoes yeah and then you see her just go through an apartment building and kill everybody to get to the soup terrorist and i i just again subverts my expectations uh yeah. this season answers a ton of questions not just there I don't mean to leap around a ton, but I think of the the head popper. I'm like, who is that? We get that answer in this season. Yep. Uh, you know, we, we get an answer about the future of, of Ryan. You get an answer about Becca. Like this season, I just think it's so good because it answers so much to me. Uh, but yeah. what stood out to you story wise? Anything in particular? Yeah, well, a, a lot of things. Of course, the, the main story, the main focus was on Stormfront and, and mm -hmm. Homelander, which it should have been. I think that's great. That, that was a great choice to put like the emphasis there. 
um, throughout the whole season, really, because it's it really is a beautiful arc. Because at first, Homelander really hates her guts, like because he's, he's, yeah. she's she's openly trying to oppose it, which is so funny. All those scenes where <laughs> she kind of makes fun of him and he doesn't know how to handle it and just smiles and just yeah. <laughs> slowly gets angry are uh, are amazing. But I thought the actress did an amazing job too. Like yeah. it's not easy to get into an ensemble cast, which, which this is, of course, from season one. It's not easy to get in there and and play a role that way. Like she she yeah. really because you were rooting for, or at least I was rooting for her at the beginning before you find out her sure. backstory. Sure, I thought it was so cool that they put like a social media emphasis on, on there. And yeah, and then there was one line from her which made me laugh. I don't think it was intended to 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 make me laugh, but when Homelander confronts her and we know she's a Nazi already, like we know she she married Frederick Vaught and she was born in in Berlin. And then she says, very emotional, we are in a war for the culture. And that's what I thought. Whoa, whoa, girl. <laughs> calm down, calm down, girl. Uh, but that was that one was really that one was really funny to me. And that was also the start of their relationship, really. Because Homelander, this was the first time where he actually had someone who saw him for what he was yeah. and respected him or even revered him for what he was. And again, Another scene that was really funny with the, those two is when Homelander, Homelander bought her roses, but then slowly the paranoia creeps in. Like, he, remember he writes her a card? I don't remember yeah. what, it, what it says, but he writes her a little card and then, uh, then she doesn't show up or she's late or, he, doesn't, or yeah. he, he lies about her and then he just torches his entire trailer and then he stands on the roof and tells her, oh, uh, electrical fire, uh, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is so good. But yeah, it, 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 amazing season. It's also fun that we got a little bit of a backstory for Butcher and Frenchie, both of them. Mm-hmm. Um, which reminds me, Butcher's dad, right? That whole that whole story. Sure. Do you do you recognize him? Who that is? No. Do you know who Butcher is? Right. What what, what movie were those two in before? Oh God, dude, you're asking the wrong guy. This is a, no. This you is have a... you, Maddie. You have seen these movies. I I I know you have. I've seen Carl Urban before. You have seen Carl Urban before. You have I've seen his dad too. I thought this was my first introduction to him. <laughs> They're both in Lord of the Rings. Oh, Carl, really? Yeah, Carl Urban plays uh, Aomir and and John Noble, his dad is is Denethor. Oh. Uh, you know okay. Sean Bean's dad? Um, yeah. Okay. The one who, so, ate, who eats like the grapes and the tomatoes very disgustingly. Right. It, in fairness, it has been a hot minute since I've seen Lord of the Rings, but yeah, of that 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 does make sense. Okay, so I have seen him before. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. That's what I love and, about Prime Video, though. Like they have the X-ray feature, so like I get to learn all of their names and everything. Goes a long way with me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. And there's yeah. one more character they introduced this season, which sadly can't appear anymore after that. But that was Lamplighter, which was yeah. had also such a cool backstory. And you, I'm sure you recognize that one. Lamplighter. Uh, oh my god, I'm trying to remember his face. Who was it? Iceman from X Men, or the guy oh, from uh, Quantum Break. X Men. Uh, I have a, a, I have a stunningly low amount of X Men, uh, movie knowledge. Believe it oh, or not, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. X Men was more like cartoons, but really the games. Those are the, mm, that's where I, I spent a lot of those times. Yeah, but but X Men, that's gonna be a target for retro uh, retro rewind. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna watch a lot of X Men movies soon. Oh yeah, um, that's especially leading idea. into the new Deadpool movie, but. Yeah, that that's a, okay. So they're really. I like how they pull from another superhero movie there in, in that yeah. regard. That's fun. That's a fun. And choice. it's also it's also funny that he plays Iceman, and here he's like fire, the, the fire guy. Um, but you've played Quantum Break, uh, I think, right? Xbox. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the the main character from uh, Quantum Jack Break. Jack Joyce. I haven't played it, but oh, uh, I love Quantum sure Break. Have. It's so underrated to me. It's <laughs> so underrated. I think that game is criminally slept on. I'm like one of those weirdos though. I haven't played much of uh remedy's latest games so mm. yeah i haven't played like control i haven't played uh, alan wake 2 but mm. i love quantum break i think that's a criminally slept on game mm. but w- what do you think of, of lamplighter here what w- how was that character to you well yeah i think he serves a really important role because you're trying to figure out you know like why is there this distrust amongst the boys in some regard like what's this mission that yeah. everyone's re- referring to and finally you you get that answer and you learn that Unfortunately, um, I'm forgetting the the woman's name. I'm checking my notes here to see if I wrote it down. Mallory, Mallory, yes, that her her kids are who died in 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 this process and everything. And you also learn that Frenchie couldn't stop Lamplighter because like his friend was ODing, and it was just this clusterfuck, honestly. And it led to a whole mission blowing up in their face. And so I think he served 
uh, a very valuable purpose um, in all of that. But also, this was where you got to see like the the soup kind of prison, if you will. Yeah. And I thought, I thought again, that was number one. There's that hilarious scene where like Mother's Milk has the dude with the huge, <laughs> I don't know if I can say it, but like just slinking up around him. He's like, he gets so pissed off. I love Mother's Milk, bro. He is so funny. Um, and then, yeah, but you also get that clarity on, on Lamplighter, that tension's there. Uh, he does a lot. He's not there for very long, though, as you said, which was a little surprising. Uh, but that's kind of what this show's known for. It's not really afraid to, to get rid of certain characters yeah yeah exactly yeah and the way he sets himself on fire symbolically in, in like the like the tower in front of the statues of the seven was really uh well done well done good character arc yeah yeah i mean this this was where um at the end of the season um not to jump all around here but uh this was where they were trying to break starlight out of the the, the tower yeah. right yeah and yeah um i thought at this point Black Panther style character. What was his name again? Black Noir. Black Noir. Thank you. I thought this is where he died at first when they like fed him like the the oh, chocolate yeah. bar with the nuts and, and he just just leave him on the floor. I'm like, wow, that's such a boy's way to go out. But obviously, that wasn't the end of his story. Uh, yeah, this this one was just so rapid fire. Um, yeah. And it again, I I I thought if I had a critique of this season personally. Curious to be great. A little too much blackmail. Season one, yeah, you know, right. there's blackmail. Season two, though, I mean, everyone's got a little something on everyone. You know, uh, uh, they have the the video of Homelander killing, and so they're like, "We'll do this, use this against you. So you can't do anything to us." And then he gets blackmail, and it's, everyone gets blackmail of everyone. I think yeah. it does become a little bit too much of a narrative crutch. Like it makes sense why, but if you literally just strip the ego, which, as we'll get into it, season three eventually, like. Once you strip that ego away and it's like, look, they can view me as a villain. I'm going to be whoever I want. And I love how they eventually play into that, like the outspoken ones, right? Like they start to play into more and more societal trends where the outspoken ones who say the, the things out loud that you're not supposed to say, like they're the celebrated ones. Mm -hmm. It ends up that you, you remove that fear of being exposed for who they are. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, again, I, I, I loved uh, just how they portrayed all of that. But I just think uh, before that, the amount of blackmail that they use to kind of get the story to the next point. That was the biggest problem I had with season two. I'm curious if you had the same issue because that's something Laylee and I, when we watched it together, were very critical of with, with the boys. It's, it's funny that you mentioned it because that didn't occur to me until right now. And I'm looking at my notes here and the word blackmail comes up three times. So you're absolutely yeah. right. Even in episode one, now that I think of it, where um, a train threatens or blackmails Annie and then Annie blackmails a train and yeah it, it just goes back and forth the whole yeah. time you're absolutely right I'd never I didn't really think about it's that but ton, you're, you're right yeah it's a ton that's really a cheap way to to do maybe that's why people didn't like season two that much that makes sense yeah it, me, it would make a little sense to me too yeah because I, I yeah. think that's fair I think it's yeah. fair. I think what happens though is True. is so good especially you know again you get to the end um and I really I mean for me at least like I feel nowadays people are really going to are, are trigger happy with the term woke, like everything, especially involving a heavily uh, female cast is woke. But they have this moment at the end of, of season two where all the guys are watching all the woman heroes beat the life yeah. out of Stormfront. And it is amazing because it's so good. They pull it off so well with everything they built up the whole way that it doesn't feel forced. Like I think, and I agree to some extent that some media nowadays, it can feel, and it's not to say I don't want this kind of media, but it can feel forced. It feels like the right intentions, the right thought process isn't behind some of these pieces. And so this felt like this is when it's done right. Like this is how you do it. Uh, and they absolutely nailed it. We're just like the woman in this show, you realize there, you're like, they all kick ass, dude. And I love it. Yeah. I think it's phenomenal how they pulled that off and brought it to your attention without really making it feel forced they did it so naturally yeah they kicked the shit out of her <laughs> <laughs> literally literally bro no superpowers just punching the life out they, of her they, they even yell like eat my shit nazi bitch or something <laughs> 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 fucking kick the shit out of her and the music the soundtrack that plays at that moment is really cool so too good. yeah that, that was a great moment it's like the opposite of what marvel did like right yeah. like in, in infinity war or or, or um let's see one guy Endgame, no spoilers, of course, but like the well, all the women get together and they're like yeah. cool and stuff. And here it's like raw, they're punching each other and they're really yeah. 
fucking kicking it's your so ass good. there. Yeah. It's also you, you realize there the boys doesn't have a lot of action scenes, if you will, like a lot nope. of big yeah. fight scenes. Like this is one of the few big fights of the show. And it's yeah. uh, it is so well done. Uh, they had like rocket launchers and everything ready for her. Um, yeah. and, and that failed spectacularly. But um, yeah, it was yeah. it was just so good, man. Just the, the way they pulled it off, put a big smile on my face. Yeah, D- there was also one character um, throughout the entire season who really played a big part in it. Now that I saw it for the second time, I didn't realize this the first time because I thought the first time when I watched this that the whole story with the deep was just like comic relief, like mm-hmm. didn't really matter as much. But he's actually the one who found the footage for Maeve of the plane. Yeah, um, true. Which I didn't, I didn't remember that. It's um, such a subtle moment. That's true, though. Yeah, yeah. But every scene with him, I don't know why. Maybe that's a wrong thing to say, but he's he's my favorite character in this. He's, <laughs> that guy makes me laugh every. The actor time is too good, screen. right? Like yeah. you know, you can acknowledge what he did in season one is of awful, course, yeah. but the actor is is hilarious Dude. in how he captures the role. He really does just capture that disingenuous piece of shit kind of attitude where he's like, I just want to get what I want back. Like, that's all. He doesn't Dude. care about anyone else except himself, and he does it so well. When he when he sits on his when he sits on his bed listening to the Google dolls, <laughs> I just I couldn't <laughs> that is such a funny scene to me. I don't know why, but that's the that was so fun. Every scene with him, also when he gets to meet his, his fake wife or his organized wife, it's, oh yeah, yeah get her. We'll, we'll, we'll pick her. Yeah. It's so funny. It's, I, yeah. yeah, I don't know why, but he, he also, I don't think he's evil. I think all the other ones are actually evil. Like Homelander is evil. a Train is evil to mm-hmm. me. Black Noir is evil. Maeve, of course not. But I think Deep, with like the right guidance, can, can, can be a good hero. Yeah. Um, He'll have his kind idiot. of crowning moment eventually. You have to think I like so, that, yeah. that, that'd be a huge deal for the yeah. show. If, if the deep just like ends up being like a big hero at so, a yeah. certain point. Um, so that's that, what we're still predicting though, is that every, you know, yeah. something's going to come along and force everyone to actually be a hero. Well, I think now that I've, now that I'm, now that I'm done with season two, I think maybe that, that thing might be Ryan, like mm. the kid, maybe, maybe he'll, Oh, grow up to be like you think kid. he's going to be the big bad. I don't know, but that that would be cool. I think maybe. Yeah. Um, but to to get back to the deep, the, the the other scene with him that made me really laugh was when he when he um, attacked the boat they were on with like a terrorist because they were gonna hand him over, and then he he jumps on the wheel and stands there all proud with like the yeah. hero pose. <laughs> he gets so nervous when he sees them still going. <laughs> it's so funny he's like he's like they're certainly gonna stop and when you see that they keep going he, you, his face again this actor is so good he's like oh no and, and it's classic boys gore just like sitting inside the guts of a friggin whale disgusting bro this show pushes, pushes some boundaries yeah and then, then all the heroes show up of course and the other ones run into the into the sewer or whatever it was and then they they all treat him like shit like he tried to help them and they're, they're all like go away like <laughs> Yeah, I, think, I think I think Homelander just gives him like a pat on the back and he's just like, you wait out here. All right. Like <laughs> it just treats him like such ass. Yeah, it's 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 real. Yeah, I, I, I love the deep. I, I think he's yeah, it's the actor. Like you said, yeah. it's it's definitely the actor. It's such a great job. Uh, but of course, the, the, the big one. Mm-hmm. What do you think of Homelander, Maddie? This yeah, this is this is the first season. Part of my dogs. This is the first season where you kind of start to sympathize for him a little bit right like season one you can see he just is a very emotional reactive person but now by this season like compound v is publicly revealed like you know what this is that the, all of the public knows what this is um the ugly sides are starting to come out and you see how different he is emotionally when like liberty kind of sees him for me it's, it's like they're perfect match for each other like they're two pieces of shit right they're perfect matches for each other but you see how he reacts when he's like holding the flowers, I think it was, and she shows up late, and he gets all bent out of shape over it. Like, it's like, oh, he does kind of, he can care, he has the ability to care about people. He does it in the wrong ways, though, at least traditionally speaking, the way he, like, tries to guide Ryan. Like, he does it in the wrong ways. Like, he just shows up, and he's like, here's my, while he's standing there with his mom, he's like, here's my new girlfriend, Liberty, and then Ryan goes off uh, to, to live with them eventually. But Homelander was my favorite character of season two. Season one was Butcher, but by the end, can we can we talk? You want to talk about like just the end end here with sure, uh, of course, yeah. yeah, with with Becca. You know, Becca ends up dying, um, and and not only that, but Becca dies by Ryan's hands, um, but not kills, but pretty much incapacitates Stormfront, um, to what we know. I I still think she'll eventually appear at some point, 
Um, we have a question about this. Go ahead. Yeah, let's do it. But we, we no, no, please. Because uh, Damien Priest um, writes in and he asks, why do you guys think Homelander doesn't kill Butcher at the end of season two? Just letting him walk away with his son. Given the fact how terrible Homelander is, I feel like his, his character would have easily killed Butcher by now since he is the cause to all his problems. Thoughts? Yeah, this is a, a good question. I don't know if I have a great answer for it because, um, yeah, at the end of this whole process, like Becca dies, uh, Liberty is hurt. Like they both, again, this, I think the more, the idea of this scene was less to pose that question, which I think is a really good one to ask, and more to just show, again, Homelander and Butcher aren't very different. Like now they've both lost their their lovers, if you will. And how they react to it is going to be very similar, as you'll eventually see. Um, so I think that's part of it. But for me, like, I think it's just Homelander's like distraught is all I can kind of chalk it up to being like, yeah. I know it's in his character to go ahead and kill, but I think it's designed to say he's actually sad. Like he's experiencing loss, true loss. Like he's not cared about anyone but himself this whole time. Finally find someone who he does care about and he loses her to his own son, by the way. And how can he find it in himself to, to love Ryan after that is another question. So I think he's for once experiencing a ton of emotions and doesn't need to just go and kill someone, not because he's rationalizing it, but he just doesn't know what to do. That's how I took it. What did you think? Well, he goes in to kill him at the very end, but then Maeve shows up and blackmails him with the plane. With the plane <laughs> yes. Right? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. How could I forget my number one complaint? Yeah. The, oh, the, my God. The, 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 I, I, I had this image burning my seat of him, like, holding his hands on his hips, like, mouth slightly agape as Butcher walks away with Ryan. Oh, but, you're right, though. But, he's, yeah, you're right. shocked. That, the uh, he, he, the 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 blackmail again, but but when he finds a, a stormfront, he really is shocked. So your 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 theory is right though, because that this is the first time, the whole season, and that's what I that's why I think they put stormfront front and center too, is to teach us that Homelander wants to be loved. That's only once, like he wants to yeah. be loved, and then when Maeve at the end threatens to take that away from him, that's when he realized like oh. That's when we know as a viewer, like that's what he wants. He wants to be yeah. loved. Um, that's where the blackmail can work, right? Because, yeah. because you know now what he loses in that and it would yeah. be everything. You know, he wants people to recognize him and to celebrate him. And yeah. the one person who could have filled that void is gone. And now if he loses his career and everything, uh, yeah. that's it. And he, he also just wants the family. Like he wants what they did to Homelander, I, I, we, we found out in season one and we found out a little bit more here in season three too. What they did to him as a kid is horrible. So yeah, yeah. of course, anyone would, would turn up. He'd turn up really fucked up, of course. So there's <laughs> way, I mean, he's, the things he did were, were ir irredeemable, like we yeah. discussed last week. But you know why he is the way he is. And you yeah. can kind of sympathize. And also the way he treats Ryan this season with care and and kind of love like he pushes him off the roof which isn't good of course but <laughs> i guess he wants to, he wants to teach him how to how to do stuff and, and why kid be, yeah <laughs> wants to be more like him <clears throat> but yeah i think homelander this season really tr they really tried to make him more sympathetic which would another way they did that which was really funny to me i think we discussed this before which that scene always makes me laugh when stormfront really goes into the nazi thing and the war on culture and yeah. we, you you are like the uber mensch or whatever you you are the one we create he just rolls his eyes like he doesn't give a shit <laughs> yeah. like he doesn't he doesn't give a shit about the culture war or yeah. all that other shit he just wants to be loved like yeah. he doesn't care about all that stuff absolutely know? yeah so it was a, a real strong season for homelander and then in the back of all this you you kind of forget throughout this not forget throughout the season people's heads are popping and yeah. this season is this, this is the season where just everyone's heads explode in in the in the cro congress, congress room yeah. and that again that was nasty nasty scene dude like just that's why i don't get how season two is actually even considered below peak television because i'm like yeah. again another great moment here where tons of people die like even the the replacement for a train dies uh, i think his yeah. name was supersonic yeah uh, and you see victoria newman in this just selling the whole thing. If you go back and watch that scene, it's brilliant because you don't know at this point it's her who's doing yeah. all this. And if you look at her in that scene, she just 
is acting as scared as everyone else when she's the one actually popping their heads. It's and everyone's like slipping on blood on the floor, falling into puddles of blood. There's guts everywhere. It's a disgusting looking scene once it's all said and done. But we do learn at the end with the the church that the deep was going to the head of that church. His head gets popped and we see Newman standing on the outside and it's revealed. Oh, it's her. It's good. It's, she's the one. Did you expect that? I didn't really have her on my list. I didn't know who to expect because I was like, who is invested enough to like the season really starts off with Sandra dying. Like her head gets popped and out of nowhere, yeah. mid conversation. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, well, who's going out after her? And then you see over and over people's heads popping. You see the Congress scene. I'm like, it's someone on the outside. It's actually someone on the inside. So I didn't suspect her. Did you? No, absolutely not. I thought the actress in that scene where all the heads pop in Congress, she sold it so well. I don't know if they told her that it was her at that time. Maybe they didn't. And they just told her to be afraid. That's that's maybe yeah. the director's cue. I don't know, because she did it so well. Um, it's also funny. You might recognize her from Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, I think. Yeah, she um, looks familiar. Her face. Yeah. yeah. Great actress. I have, I've only seen her in Call of Duty and I've seen her in this and nothing else. Oh. But she is awesome. I thought she was uh, she was amazing. Yeah. Um, especially in that scene, yeah, in Congress where everybody starts popping. She also just shows up this season, right? Like there's no yeah. not really a big introduction. She's just there all of a sudden, like Congresswoman mm -hmm. Vic Victoria Newman. It's just suddenly she's a character, which is yeah. cool, I think. That's the way to do it. Well, because this this the show is so good at having one ant one arm behind its back. Like yeah. she feels like it feels like she's there to exist as this sort of political storytelling tool because a lot of what's ramping up is surrounding like terrorism, racism, us versus them. And then you have a politician kind of at the center of it campaigning. You're like, okay, makes sense. Right. Yeah. And that's all I thought of her. I was like, yeah, it just makes sense for the story they're trying to tell here. But then it turns out she's like one of the, the big faces for season three and inevitably season four. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, it just, it, it plays a huge factor in what's to come of course, but uh, talking about, and I mean, they just do so, well at ending seasons on such a strong note where you're like oh my god that's why i binge this show so easily we mean lately you're like well time to go find out what happens next like it was like three weekends in a row we just finished a season each time it was that good yeah, yeah exactly and it also wraps up all the storylines while still asking like new questions which is which yeah. is awesome um Absolutely. yeah they did a really they did a really great job we forgot to mention one scene which we both love the, the very first homelander scene in the season do you remember it's the one where uh, with, with the blind superhero who can hear really oh well. Oh my then, gosh, dude! <laughs> <laughs> he actually, just goes up actually, to him and look at me. Yeah, just after all that, that is, woo. Yeah. So for those who don't remember, it's a scene where you know guy's got like good hearing. He's blind though. Homelander, you know, he seems kind of genuine about. It. He's like, oh, you know, hey, that's great, and immediately claps this dude's ears. And it's another like nasty scene. I think I texted you immediately when I saw that. I went, yeah. that was gross. Like, <laughs> guys just on the floor screaming, his blood's leaking out of his ears. Ashley actually seeing for the first time there who Homelander yeah. is. I love Ashley, by the way. Like, she's so yeah. annoying in the right ways. Like, if yeah. if a character can annoy me on screen, I'm like, Man, I hate Ashley. I, it's like a it's in a, a, a term of endearment for me because I'm like the actor or actress has sold it so well that I've just bought into their character. Yeah. I'm like, I can't stand you. You're so annoying. And she is exactly that. Especially when she starts like ripping out her hair, <laughs> she's so stressed. But yeah, that was another absolutely fucked up scene in the show. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, I don't, I can't think of a big negative this season except for the, the blackmail that you very, very good that you brought that up because that's definitely true. But other than that, I can't think of a negative that I that I can hold against this season. Yeah. Uh, I, I personally can't either. I'm biased, I guess, but like I just think I thought it was so good from top to bottom. I really, really, really like this season a lot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we've got, we've got one more question. The last one from uh, Tanya Rice, who writes in and asks: When you look at the show overall, would you like Marvel to take this approach? Maybe more evil superheroes, or the fact that it's separate from Marvel makes it more exciting. Makes it more exciting the boy the fact the boys have created their own world of mayhem. Um, I think Marvel can do it. I know I don't know if what the public perception of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness is, but Good. I love that movie. I love that movie. Like as a Marvel fan, I'm saying like not like a top mm -hmm. movie of all time for me, but I adore that movie. It was such a breath of fresh air. I'm partial to Sam Raimi style. I've just come to know over the years. He just does a very weird film style. But one thing I yeah. talked about in Spider-Man 2 
is there were scenes like where Doc Ock's tentacles come alive and he's throwing buzz saws around and stuff. You don't see any blood, but they cut the music. It's it's very horror esque, uh, but you don't really get the blood and the violence out of it. I'll just say that with Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness, I think you get some of the blood and violence out of it in certain scenes. It's not a movie that's afraid to push some of the, the maturity level there. And that doesn't make it perfect. But I again, I really love what it pulled off in that regard. It is definitely still one of the movies from Marvel that sticks out in my head is like, that was amazing. Um, and so I think they're capable of doing that. Uh, I wish they didn't just do it in one offs like Logan. Like Logan's a beautiful movie. One of the best ever. Um, and that's super gory. Like, I think Marvel can just, they can do it. I think they just choose not to. And that's kind of what's frustrating about it is I don't know if they need a satire written show like the boys, but I think people would be all over Marvel if they set up a villain who you're just seeing him stomp people out, crush them, like really exercising their powers in ways that aren't just the ways we've seen for years and years and like really get dark with it, really get bloody and gory with it. It's an effective storytelling tool in superhero stories because you, as the boy shows, people react to it really strongly because you just don't see it in superhero stories outside of DC, really. And DC, it's very, very rare because you'll see it like the Joker where you shoot someone in the head, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, I think it, it adds a layer of maturity uh, to the for the viewer. And I, I wish that Marvel would take take people up on that idea more often because again it showed with dr strange in the multiverse of madness they can do it oh absolutely they can go to some crazy spots they just choose not to so i hope one day they choose to because it, it it doesn't even do the adverse effect of oh man they finally did it and and it went really mature with that and that scene hit harder it's like no i just want more of that like i want to see these yeah. heroes and villains beat the shit out of each other and other people it goes a long way in solidifying that they are actually stronger than everyone else. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good, uh, really good answer. Of course, yeah, I agree. I think Marvel's problem for me is that they they have no, or they do have a lot of compelling villains. They're just not using them in the right way. Um, yeah, I'm afraid <laughs> they're going to use Doctor Doom soon. I'm not super connected to Doctor Doom, they but will. I I feel like he's ripe with potential for like a really interesting yeah. new MCU style villain. And I feel like they're going to use him too soon and not get the most out of him. So yeah. I'm a little worried when they select him, if they do. Yeah, I think for the new Fantastic Four, they, they were going to go with Galactus, I think, which mm. is going to be played by um, Finchy from The Office. I can't remember his real name now, but a uh, great actor. Okay. Uh, great voice actor, too. He was in um, Final Fantasy 16, The Opera oh, really? 2. Um, the guy with the booming voice. Like, you'll, 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 you'll uh, recognize oh, him. Oh, the guy who I like. Was he also yeah. in Diablo? Is that who I'm thinking of? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, I love exactly. that guy's voice. Yeah, yeah, so good. Great, great actor. So he'll he'll play Galactus, which will be fun, I think. But yeah, other than that, Marvel. I'm sad to say, but Marvel has kind of lost me. Like I haven't Same. watched the, yeah. the the last few things they've done. I think uh, Secret Invasion was the last thing I watched, and then I had, that that was enough for me. Like now I'm now I'm really done. So it's just there's that. Well, part of why you could buy into Marvel before was there wasn't there was a vision, right? There was like an idea of where we were going, and it was very yeah. clear, and it was very very good. Like it was again core memory for me. Like I may not be a movie guy, but that was a core, you know, teenager and early college days memory for me of just like going to see these movies and in different phases of my life and watching this story build up. Uh, it was incredible. I, I want them to get back to that spot, but I think they're a ways away from that right now because they're feeding it into TV shows more. And that's just not yeah. that's just not compelling. It's more compelling when it's just a movie, you know, every year or so. And it's moving that story forward and bringing them together more and more. You get to theorize like you just don't get that with these shows. The buzz just isn't there as much as it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. But uh, yeah, no, I think we said everything we wanted to say about the boys yeah. and Marvel. Agreed. <laughs> I guess. 41 minutes seems to be our sweet spot. We just land everything at 41 minutes. Here we are again. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate you. Those of you who wrote in Jack, Damien, Tanya, thank you for writing in. You can do so over on patreon.com slash retro revive. Your support does mean the world to us. Not just on a level of, hey, it feels good to see you around, but it makes a difference in our content. You get early access to some of the stuff we're doing, get to be a part of the show in other ways, get to vote on call sheet, get to be a part of it all. So just thank you. Thank you for joining us. And we'll catch you next week for our first ever new movie review here on Retro Rewind with Furiosa. And until then, take great care of yourselves and peace out.
Do remember that with YouTube's declining ad revenue, this content truly is not possible without your support. So thank you to everyone who watched, but also to those of you who signed up on Patreon. A special thanks to our retro producers, Aaron Shepard, Andrew Martinez, Anthony Garofalo, Anthony Starr, Ben, Ben is handsome, Ben Woth, Bobby Rodriguez, Brandon Vandeman, Brendan Horton, Chris Nelson, Colton Kiefer, David Portnov, Forge Horizons, Golden Goose, Jay-Z, Jeremy Schock, John W. Torres, Justin Robinson, Kyle Corey, Luke Aldersley, Miranda Grubba, Midnight, Mr. House Jr., Nico, Noah the Otter, Ordo Boyo, Poot, Quack Sweet Feet, Rallo, Sean Mason, Sotelo 74, The Smith One, Tom Penzeka, Ty Gorgon 12, and Tyler Kaminsky. Thank you to everyone who supports what we do here. Again, we truly couldn't do this without you.